Well, good morning, YouTube. All right, guys, it is another day. Got more work to do. We only have a few days left until we leave for the Laconia rally. So trying to get a few more things done here on the homestead and around the homestead. So technically, we're not at the homestead today. We're up at the lot where we park at Goliath. One of my responsibilities in trade for being able to park here is Joe asked me if I maintain the lawn up here. So I come up and I mow it periodically and every once in a while, I spray weed killer. This next trip, we're gonna be gone for about two and a half months. So I'm using a very strong mixture of basically the gloss of stuff. And uh, we're gonna spray all the hard to reach areas so that while I'm gone, Zach will just have to come up every once in a while, run over it with the mower. Hopefully he won't have to worry about any weed eating. When we're done here, I'm gonna take it over to the new shop. I'm gonna spray a bunch of weeds there so that hopefully throughout the summer, we don't have a huge amount of growth when I come back in the fall. So what we're using today is my old four x four Polaris. Now I've had this four wheeler for, well, 11 years now or so, but this was my grandfather's. He used it on his farm up in New York for many, many years. It is a 1992, if I'm not mistaken. And he had it when it was only a couple years old. I think he bought it used but it wasn't real used. And unfortunately he passed away. And when he passed away, nobody else had any interest in the four wheeler. I did. So I brought it home and uh, been using it ever since. Now we, we played with it sometimes, but it's the only four wheel drive four wheeler that I have. So I also use this as the workhorse. So you see, I've got the uh, 15 gallon spray tank on the back. It's just one of those Fimco ones. I bought it from Tractor Supply probably 10 or 12 years ago as well. Um, I rigged up a lithium banshee battery right there to run the pump now i haven't charged that battery in like a year so i'm hoping it doesn't die on me while i'm spraying so hopefully we'll get through the job now this is a two-stroke four-wheeler it does have the oil injection so i've double checked make sure the oil is in there i just topped it off with fuel it is old and it needs a lot of work while we've been gone the last couple years over the summers the kids have been using it around the property and uh talon and derek are riding it i think derek more than anything else they broke a CV axle in it, so sometimes when I'm trying to steer, it catches, and I, I really need to give this thing some love on my list for when we get the new shop done. Um, but tried and true, it always starts for me. Sometimes it's hard to start, but I can always get it started. Brakes aren't working all that great, so I gotta be really careful with what I'm doing here, especially because I'll have a spray wand in one hand. Gotta use the throttle and the brake with the other. All right, so let's get it unloaded and get to work. All right, well, I sprayed this property along the fence lines and around a bunch of this equipment that doesn't move, other side of Goliath. It takes two hands to do all this, so I didn't really record a whole lot, but uh, I've used almost everything I've got. I'm gonna go over to the shop and spray it next, but there's no water supply there, so I'm gonna go home, refill the tank, and then go back over to the shop, spray that. Okay, back out of the house, making up another batch of solutions. So I've got the hose in there already. Um, starting to fill it and I'm doing this at kind of a slow pace. I noticed that if I try to fill the tank too fast, it foams and I got to let the foam die down and fill more. So I'm just turning it on kind of slow cause I'm not in a hurry. Got this empty bottle of Amsoil Marine oil here. And that's kind of what I use to mix my products. So this is what I'm using right here, the RM 43. And normally this isn't the brand that I buy because it's a little bit more expensive. Typically I get the tractor supply brand and it's about $30 cheaper for a two and a half gallon jug. And the tractor supply brand is actually a stronger strength. But basically for 15 gallons of water, I use one quart of the total vegetation control. It's kind of like an off brand of Roundup, similar stuff. The formulas vary a little bit, but the active ingredient is the glycid from stuff. Guys, I can say it, I just don't want to. So it's actually glyphosate and isopropylamine salt. Yeah. So anyway, I just pour this into the quart. That's how I measure how much I use. And then I pour it into the tank and let the water mix it all up. Now this isn't like a super strong mixture. It's kind of more of a middle of the road mixture. You can mix it stronger if you're trying to like really get rid of like hardwoods and saplings and stuff like that but we're really just doing weed control along fence lines and stuff. So this is kind of my happy medium where it's, 
it's strong enough to do what I needed to do, but I'm not really wasting uh, any material. And that's because this stuff is not cheap. This two and a half gallon jug is like $179 at Tractor Supply. And the Tractor Supply brand, which I have here, just because that one's almost empty, so I bought backup, is this one here, 53.8 glyphosate. See, told you I could say it. Anyway, that one's like $139, $149 for a two and a half gallon jug, something like that. Either way, it's not cheap, but the actual Roundup brand is like stupid money, and it's the same stuff. You're just paying for the brand name for the most part. All right, so we're just gonna let that finish filling up, and then we'll head over to the shop and spray that. All right, looks like we are full. Put the cap back on this. Let's head over to the shop. All right, guys, we're out at the shop now. And you can see I got like a weed line growing out here in front of the buildings in this driveway. All the cracks and the concrete up here. And then that whole area right through here, which is actually like a gravel base, but it's just been unmaintained for so long that the stuff keeps growing through. And I sprayed this all last year. I think it was October that I sprayed it, but you know, it's, it's coming back. Now that it's springtime, we're gonna do along the fence line, and then of course we're gonna do up here in front. So we're gonna spray this entire area here, which is kind of like the driveway and my, I don't know, call it a parking lot, I guess, I don't know. This is how we access all of the bay doors on this side. But as you can see, it's just all growing up really tall again. Well, guys, if you saw there, whether I left it in or not, I tried to record a little bit while I was spraying. Very, very difficult to do. And here's why. So I'm having a little bit of an issue getting the four-wheeler to idle properly. So when I come to a stop to spray, it's stalling out on me, and then it's really hard to get restarted. So what I've done is I've bumped the idle screw up a little bit. So it's idling a little bit high, and it's not stalling. But the problem there is when I want to stop, it wants to keep creeping. So I have to hold the brake and holding the brake with one hand, spraying with the other hand, it leaves no hand to hold a camera. And I don't have a good mount with me to put on here again. I know, I know. Anyway, um, I sprayed all of that area over there, all the way around the perimeter of the building. And I started spraying my lot area, so to speak. But that's where I ran out of the solution. So I'm going to run back to the house, mix up one more batch. I can finish this area. And then I got anything left over, I'll go ahead and spray around Joe's building too, just to, just to kind of get rid of it. Now doing these large open areas like this, it's kind of when I wish I still had the boom system on the back of here. When I bought the sprayer, it had a boom, but that tank was actually mounted to a teeny tiny little trailer. And at first I was using the lawn tractor to haul it around. Now, we were living at a different house when I bought it. We had a lot of pasture land over there. Um, it was a rental house, but we had like four and a half acres of pastures. It was divided into like seven pastures. And so I was using this to spray the fence line so that made my mowing job easier. So I'd hook it to the back of the riding mower and I'd run it along fence lines, but I'd get in these weird positions where it's kind of downhill in a corner of a fence line. And trying to back that thing up, it would jackknife so fast, so quick. Um, it was just really a pain in the butt. And that's why I decided to take it off of the trailer and just mount it to the four-wheeler because my maneuverability is so much better. In the process, I lost my boom system and I don't even know where that boom system is anymore, but it had like four sprayer nozzles and it would do like an eight or 10 foot wide path. That would be great for these parking lot type areas or these gravel driveways to just open them up, turn it on and drive along instead of having to use the sprayer.
Oh no, it's running away from me. So it's done over here now. And I know that at this point, you don't really see the reward. The problem with spraying weeds is there is no instant gratification. It's gonna take three to five days before you start seeing it yellow. Could take a full week before you see any real progress on it. But I'm not even gonna be here to see it. The whole idea was this will minimize how bad it will be when I do get home. Like I said, this trip, we're gonna be gone for about two and a half months. And in that two and a half months, this will be knee to chest high. And it'll just be a lot more work to maintain after that. So nipping the bud now helps just make my life a little bit easier in the future months. When we do come home from Sturgis, we won't be here but a week or two before we head out to Ocean City, Maryland. That's if we even come home between then. And so I don't want to spend all my time weed whacking. So this little step here should hopefully make things a little bit easier. But before I leave you today, I did notice something while I was out here spraying, and I didn't notice it when we were here last week dropping off the oil because we didn't use this store. I did mention that there was a little bit of gutter damage here, probably from the tornadoes that came through. But today I noticed this. The garage door bucking came loose from the actual wall. So I got to find a way to fix that before I head home. Hopefully that will be as simple as just pushing it back up against the bucking and maybe adding a couple of tap cons. But for now guys, we're gonna end this video. And if for some reason you see this video before the tree felling video, they might be out of order. I haven't edited this one yet, so I don't know that there won't be a problem, but editing my tree felling video yesterday, for some reason it won't export the video. It can't save it properly. It just says there's an error, which means there's a corrupted file but out of the 100 files that are in that video, it won't tell me which file. So I may just have to start from scratch and re-edit that video completely, which sucks because I got a couple hours of time into it already. And now I just got to redo it. But nonetheless, hopefully you'll see the video because it was a really tricky tree felling. But uh, like I said, we're done with this one here. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Until the next time I see you, keep those engines running and stop those weeds from growing.